Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Global Compliance Panel's live webinar on 21 CFR Part 58, The Good Laboratory Practices for GLP Regulation. My name is Michael, and I'll be your host for today's session. And on behalf of the Global Compliance Panel team, I'd like to thank you all for being part of today's webinar. Today's webinar is being presented by Mr. Albert A. Guignon. Albert holds the MS, RAC, and he's also the CEO of AAG Incorporated. And for more than 30 years, Albert's focus has been on FDA-related matters in regulatory affairs, quality assurance, and clinical affairs. And he also has expertise in dealing with all aspects of the FDA approval process for drugs, biologics, medical devices, and generic drugs. And Albert has also worked in every major segment of the industry research, quality assurance, regulatory affairs, manufacturing, and also clinical. And he's been responsible for regulatory submissions, registrations, FDA liaison, clinical studies, compliance activities, and FDA training. And his lectures throughout the world on numerous FDA-related matters as well. And he's also a consultant to the FDA and also trains FDA's field force, those who conduct FDA inspections on GCP, GLP, and also GMP. And in addition to training, FDA personnel, Albert also consults and trains for drug, biologic, and medical device companies. U.S. Army's HIV Research Group, NIH AIDS Group, U.S. Army's Surgical Research Group, and also the Naval Medical Research Group. And Albert's also a member of the Regulatory Affairs Professional Society, which elected him the 1984's Professional of the Year. And he's also served as the Society is the Vice President, President, and also the Chairman of the Board of Directors. And in recent years, Albert's filed numerous FDA drug, biologic, and medical device submissions for product approval. In addition, Albert also has been involved in two of the largest clinical trials ever conducted, the 8,000 patient clinical trials in Africa and the 16,000 patient clinical trial in Thailand. And we are honored to have Albert with us today to present today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start off today's webinar, I'd like to quickly outline today's program. This webinar is for a 90-minute duration. First, Albert will take you through today's webinar, highlighting the area he would cover and then share with you his presentation. And also, I'd like to inform all the participants today that once part of today's teleconference, you've been placed on mute and would remain so until the Q&A begins. We have a couple of minutes at the end for your question and answers, but if you do come up with questions during the session, ladies and gentlemen, please post them in the Q&A panel or the chat column. And for any reason, if you do get logged out to today's session, please follow the same procedure to join in again. Now that we are all ready, I request Albert to take it from you. Albert? Thank you. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to today's webinar on 21 CFR Part 58, the Good Laboratory Practice uh, Regulations. Um, to start off, first of all, uh, I want to explain a couple of things to you. First of all, I have no idea what your experience levels are. So what I do uh, during my presentation is I'll go in depth and explain things as if you had no experience in the industry at all. And of course, that would now include um, the, the term here or the phrase here, Title 21 CFR Part 58. Uh, Title 21 references FDA in the U.S. government. All agencies have title numbers in the United States government. So far, 50 title numbers have been issued. Whenever you hear Title Number 21, it means FDA. Um, they did this instead of always having to say FDA. They just could say Title 21. People know who they're talking about. Now, CFR is the Code of Federal Regulations. Um, these are uh, the um, volumes that contain all FDA's rules and, and regulations. And of course, um, Part 58 would be the first volume. Uh, and in that first volume, uh, you would find this particular GLP uh, regulation. So Title 21, it means FDR, FDA. CFR is Code of Federal Regulations, all FDA's rules and regulations in these nine volumes. And of course, finally then, Part 58, which happens to be in Volume 1, which is the particular GLP we're going to cover today. GLPs became effective in June 1979. 
They resulted from a series of FDA inspections, and of course the FDA inspections were done under GMP. FDA inspections of non-clinical laboratories. Now, let me define the, some of the terms here. Non-clinical is an FDA term. It means non-human studies. Non-clinical means non-human studies. That would be in vitro studies. Um, that would be animal trials. Uh, and of course, anything of the other bench trials, uh, anything that would not involve uh, studying a, a human. Uh, are referred to by FDA as non-clinical laboratory studies and audits of study data that reveal serious problems with the conduct of safety studies and the quality and integrity of the data derived from them. Now, GLPs references non-clinical laboratory safety trials. It could be in vitro trials, could be animal trials. But notice the term safety trials, those that have an impact uh, on um, safety. The GLP regulations establish basic standards for the conduct and reporting of non-clinical safety testing. You could run non-clinical studies, but if it doesn't impact safety, a GLP is not required. And later on, uh, I'll mention some of those. And reporting of non-clinical safety testing and are intended to ensure the quality and integrity of safety data submitted to FDA. Um, the quality of the study and integrity of the data. Non-clinical laboratory study means in vivo or in vitro experiments in which test articles. The test article is, in this case, if we're talking about a drug, uh, the molecule uh, that we're studying, which test articles are studied prospectively in test systems. A test system, uh, say in an animal trial, would be the particular animal you're using under laboratory conditions to determine their safety. The term does not include studies utilizing human subjects or clinical studies, because we have a thing called GCP, good clinical practices to cover those, or field trials in animals, because they have um, the same particular type of regulation for animal trials. The term does not include basic exploratory studies carried out to determine whether a test article has any potential utility or to determine physical or chemical characteristics of a test article. That would be better be known as quality control. Therefore, toxicology range finding studies, pharmacological studies, early chemical synthesis, screening evaluations, many metabolic studies and other basic R&D studies are not covered by GLP. Studies in support of a product safety are governed by GLP. Now, let me explain something um, to you. Although these studies I mentioned here are not covered by GLP, if you did do them as GLP studies, FDA would have no objection. In fact, they would praise you for that. Um, the difference basically between a GLP study and a non-GLP study is in a GLP study as part of the uh, particular protocol, we have an audit group a group that audits from beginning uh, to end. And so the difference between the non-clinical um, GLP study, uh, uh, certainly and those that are required to have GLP and those that are not required to have GLP is this audit group. This is the overall organization of the GLP. It was based upon the format of the GMP. GMP came first. In fact, the problems with this data was, was found during a GMP inspection. And if you look at the format for the GMPs, you'll see it's the same as the format uh, for the GLPs. First, the general provisions. Then they talk about the organization internal to the company and the personnel involved. Then the particular facility where you're going to run these GLP studies then the equipment that you're using during these particular trials, the operation of the facility itself, the test article, which is the molecule which you're studying, and if it has a control in the study, the, the control article itself, the protocol for the conduct of the non-clinical lab study, the records and reports that must be collected during these type of trials, and they have something which the GMP does not have, and that is disqualification of a testing facility um, if such uh, problems do exist. So we're going to go through all these uh, subparts uh, for the GLP.